Hey everybody, Brian here. Uh, three days ago I released Balls Out Physics episode 4 and I can't thank everyone enough for all of the positive comments and all the thumbs up. I mean, it's it's great. It really seems like this, this movement is starting to gain steam. And by movement, I mean just questioning the, the world we live in. Um, questioning the model of the world we live in. I mean, I, in my opinion, we don't really have a complete model yet and that's what we're all working towards. Uh, using empirical data to develop one, if we can, and uh, and going from there. Um, I, 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 if you haven't watched that video yet, or if you haven't watched the video, it's it's about uh, the thermosphere and and the second law of thermodynamics and the basic principle that hot or hot energy, which is really kinetic hot heat, is really kinetic energy, and heat moves to cold, and. In the comments, a, a couple of people mentioned Moonlight, and I, I'd seen some of this stuff, and I hadn't really spent too much time looking into it, but I thought it, I've always thought it was very, very interesting, uh, the, the idea that Moonlight is cool. There's, there's some videos out there of people showing with thermometers or uh, temperature, any type of temp temperature measuring device that the temperature in direct moonlight, I'm assuming with the full moon, is, is a few degrees cooler than temperature in the shade of the moonlight and a couple people brought this up in the comments and that's that's so interesting the cool moonlight right and or that moonlight is cool and uh, uh, I think it was Anki or E-N-K-I or Ank1 it was, he, he posted a comment or, or she I'm not sure Ank I'm gonna say Ank uh, posted a comment under my comment about the crappy video quality um, I'm sorry about that, everybody. I'm still learning to use my new P900, which I love. But uh, um, uh, the, the, the comment in the comment, Ank said that that did disagree with me. Ank disagrees with me about um, uh, hot always flowing to cold because of the moonlight. And Ank, Ank stated that cold could flow to hot. And that's been in the back of my mind. I've been thinking about that um, because it, it does like seem like light is coming from the moon, whether it's being reflected by the sun or whether the moon's emitting its own light. And so I was thinking about that yesterday, uh, pulling into a parking place. I was, I was on my lunch break and uh, pulling into a parking place and I remembered for some reason Eric Dubay saying that fire is intensified by mo direct moonlight, that, that fire gets more intense in direct moonlight. And uh, I had thought about that when he said that, so that's, that's really interesting. How could we test that? And I'd always thought about how you could do that with campfire. But then it hit me, that actually makes a lot of sense if moonlight is cool. Potential difference. Um, to, to give you an example of this, uh, I, uh, my uncle up in, up, uh, up in New England uh, is an avid cyclist. I mean, he rides all the time. He rides in the middle of winter when it is freezing cold up there, and he was boiling his, his, his water and, and then putting it in his water bottle before he went out and was always complaining that this water was freezing he, uh, freezing before he could drink it because I mean he's hardcore he rides in much colder than freezing uh, temperatures and uh, and I realized oh it's the potential difference if you were t if you take boiling water and put it in a freezer and then you take the same volume of boiling water and put it in another freezer an equal freezer you know um, with, the, with the same amount of stuff in it, uh, typically the boiling water will actually freeze faster than the room temperature water. You can look this up because for some reason, I don't think we really have a, 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 an answer for this. I did a little research on this and there's, there's some art, recent articles about this. Uh, the, when, when the potential difference, the, the, the potential difference means the difference between temperatures is greater heat starts accelerating faster and faster and faster to the colder area. So that's why hot water actually freezes faster to a certain extent. I mean, you also have to factor in time and how far apart the temperatures are and everything else, but the rate of acceleration is faster. So that would explain if, if moonlight is cool, that would explain why fire is intensified because the temp the potential difference between the fire's the fire's temperature, which stays the same, and the moon the, the surrounding temperature, uh, which is cooled by the moonlight, is is increased. And so, I, I started I started texting Droid Fuel about this uh, while I was eating lunch. We were, we were going back and forth, and um, I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm thinking I'm 
I, I was I, I, for some reason I was centered around campfire and, and how I, I was thinking like how to move a burning log in and out of the, the moonlight and then uh, I was like how can we test this how can we test this he's like just take a candle and move it in and out of the moonlight I'm like oh duh <laughs> you know, yeah that's all we need all you really need is a candle and so first things first we need to actually we need to we need to prove with experiments that moonlight is cool but if and, and if moonlight is cool my theory is that the light isn't shining from the moon it's the moon absorbing heat from the earth because hot goes to cold i do believe that experimentation has shown it is the second law of thermodynamics and so would that mean that the light we're seeing is not actually coming from the moon we're seeing energy being absorbed from the earth and it's glowing. It's like when you have a flashlight or like, like a mag light, for example, which, which gives you a solid beam. When you shine it away from you, you can see the beam, the light's moving away from you, but what you're seeing is the light in the beam is reflecting off the air particles back at you. So the same thing could be happening with the moon. Just like you see that, like if you shine a light at a wall, you see the you see the, the the light imprint on the wall it's being reflected back at you is that what we're seeing with the moon it's actually moving away from us but we can't tell because light moves so fast it's really interesting so I, talking to Droidfield about this uh, Droidfield also mentioned that maybe this is why uh, wolves hate the moon so much because it's pulling energy away from us it's kind of funny I thought it was hilarious but uh, um, I started think, think, thinking about how, how we can test this, you know, I, 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 the candle experiment more and more, and um, I started looking at this last night. Uh, right now, the moon is a super moon. We're in luck, it's, and it's a new moon. And on March 23rd, we're gonna have a full super moon. So here's what I'm proposing. If you wanna, if you wanna help out and, and record this, please do this. All, you, all we need are, are stick candles, and if you've got a thermometer or something to measure temperature to, 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 to show that in a video too, please do. The more videos we get of this, the more experimentation, the more empirical data we can get, the more we can draw a conclusion about moonlight being cold. So here's my idea, is you get, you get a pack of stick candles. You want them all to be the same, and uh, the higher quality, the better, because that, that typically you get what you pay for, and the, the more quality control. You know, candles, every candle is going to vary a little bit from, from each other. And so you, you find a shaded area, I'll try to draw like a little porch roof here, and you put a candle there, light it, put a candle out here, light it. I mean, it would actually be great to have two people and try to light them at the same time. Um, you know, to light the one outside and the one inside, or, you know, put, I'm going to try to put three in the shade and three out in the moonlight. Okay, got the moon up here, and the, the, the theory is that this, the, can, the light from this candle will be a little bit more intense and, uh, and brighter than the light from this candle. Now, chances are that it's going to be pretty hard to tell, because if it's only a few degrees dif dis difference, it's not, I don't think it's going to be this extreme. Now, obviously, this is not the scale, you know, I never draw anything to scale, but just have to make that claim that, you know, you're not going to see this much difference in the flame. So what I was thinking is, what we can do is let them burn for about half an hour, and then come back and measure the how how the dif the distance from the from the bottom of the candlestick to the top, and see if there's a notable noticeable dif difference in how much these candle or this candle has burned down versus this one, because that's the way we can measure the intensity. I don't I don't think it's going to be that obvious, but if these candles burned in the moonlight burn down noticeably faster than the ones that aren't in the moonlight. And that, that's a pretty good proof that fire is intensified. So now, the theory here, based on this, if moonlight is cool, I started thinking, I thought about this all day yesterday, and I started thinking, okay, the sun warms the earth. The sun transfers energy to the earth through heat. And if the moon absorbs heat, what? and this is a closed system, the sun moves over the earth, during the day, warms the earth, heats up everything, heats up the earth, the trees, asphalt, us, houses, all those things. Then the moon comes over and absorbs heat. You know, it's always darkest and coldest before the dawn. Now, the moon isn't always over our heads all night long, but this is the general theory that I'm working on here. It's just an idea, a theory, really. And so the moon comes by and absorbs the heat that the sun uh, the sun imposed on the earth. And so 
if this is a closed system that we live in, that would make a lot of sense. And so, based on Eng's comment, I, I started thinking, what if the moon acts like a capacitor for the sun? And so the, the, the moon just reabsorbs the energy from the sun, and it just it's a continuous 28-day loop. And is that what's actually causing the phases? What we're seeing in the phases is the capacitor charging and discharging. It, it's storing energy for the sun and then discharging it back to the sun over and over and over again. So the sun would actually be, uh, the, the intensity of the sun would actually be increasing and decreasing with, with the phases of the moon. Now, I'm trying to think of ways we could test this further. First of all, first off, we need to really verify that moonlight is cool. But I just, it feels like moonlight is cool. You know, just thinking about it on a full moon night, it seems cool. And I, 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 I kept thinking, cool moonlight. I was like, where have I heard those lyrics from? And you might notice I've quoted Whitesnake up here, the still of the night. It says, in the still of the night, in the cool moonlight, is some lyrics from, or part of the lyrics from that song. And I've had that song playing in my head constantly since I realized that. Uh, so this, this experiment and this theory has its own theme song already, which is great. And uh, uh, this is something we can easily test. And every, you know, every month we can keep testing this over and over to get more, more, more results showing whether the moonlight is cool or not. Now, if you've ever looked into the electrical universe theory and, and the work of Wallace Thornhill, this man is a plasma physicist, and his PhD uh, from Australia and, and, or New Zealand. I always I can, can never remember which country, but um, this guy, the electric universe theory is very interesting. There's a documentary called Thunderbolts of the Gods. I highly recommend wa watching it. it. It is based on the heliocentric model, but he's done experiments with plasma, uh, sh basically showing that the damage, the craters we see on the moon, are more, were more likely caused by some kind of elect, uh, electrical storm. Uh, one of the main reasons is because the craters are perfect circles, perfect concentric circles on the moon. That doesn't make any sense that it would be all caused by um, uh, collisions in space because there's no like ricochets or anything like that. Every It's like every object that hit the moon would have had to make a perfect perpendicular uh, uh, like straight line impact right into the moon to cause those craters to look the way they do. And so he's he's shown through experimentation that this uh, that this this damage is electrical. So if it's a capacitor or something like that, and something happened in the past where it arced out on the Earth and there was a lightning storm or something like that, like like Thunderbolts tends to theorize, is this what it could be? Um, I know I'm speculating a lot, and it's you know I, I love speculating and thinking about what this world could be and. And it's, it is a wild theory, but I think it, it, it kind of works with the phases if, it, if it's charging and discharging. And uh, I talked to Droid Fuel a lot about this, and he, he, he agrees that this could be, or this is a valid theory. So, uh, I mean, it has to be proven, but I think we, we should really investigate this. So, uh, that's it. If you want to help, please. Get some stick candles and March 23rd. We need a still night. You know, I might not have a still night here in Florida, so as many people as we can, you know, because we don't want the wind blowing our candles out, as many people are ready to do this, the more chances we have of success on the first try. And this is a super moon, so we, we I mean, this is this would be great. I mean, I would think that the super moon would create more light, and then so the, the temperature differential will be greater. We'll see a more obvious result in, the, in how the candles burn down. And then thermometers, I'm, I'm, I'm looking into getting a device to actually measure the temperature of the moonlight um, and, uh, and, and also show the temperature difference wherever I am. So, uh, yeah, this is the idea. Just throwing this out there for discussion. Um, if, please comment, let me know your thoughts on this. Uh, and uh, we'll keep, uh, keep experimenting, uh, trying to figure out what this world is, searching for truth. So until next time, peace.